Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about Ardu Pilot Flight Mode. Now this is one specifically for a patron of mine, a patron called Steve. So Steve asked me to make a video on this, an updated one. I made one a very long time ago that kind of covered this and things have changed a lot. A lot of the Ardu Pilot modes uh, now look and feel like things you'd probably bump into if you're using Betaflight or iNav. So things like Auto-Tune, auto tune auto things like acro mode and things like that are the same kind of names that you're probably already familiar with if you use another flight control system. Now the best place to go to to find this stuff out is always going to be the RD Pilot documentation. Now, I'll put a link down below. Not only does it list out exactly what all the flight modes are, how it works, what they do, but there are also specific things that you can tweak for some of the flight modes in the full parameters tree and that is really useful it details in the documentation exactly how all that stuff works so if you're interested in a particular flight mode it's definitely worthwhile just making yourself a cup of coffee cup of tea sitting there and just having a read and also being familiar with all of those different pieces i'm not going to cover all of that as part of this what i'm going to do is kind of just set the scene of what the modes are and typically how they're used also the ones that i use the most because some of the modes are a little bit wacky and probably used by a very small number of pilots, other modes are things that are used all the time and probably the vast majority of pilots will set them up. So you can have six flight modes set up in any one time in something like Ardu Plane and Ardu Copter and the vast majority of the time I'm really only setting up four and one of those is typically returned to home so that in the event of a problem I can have an ODS switch. And the flight modes for Ardu Copter and Ardu Plane, so they're just different versions of the Ardu Pilot family. There's also Ardu Boat, Ardu Rover, Ardu Sub, believe it or not. So Ardu Plane and Ardu Copter are the two that I'm going to cover in here because they're the most commonly used uh, platforms for the Ardu Pilot family. They have different flight modes, and you'll see in a minute the Ardu Copter that we'll look at first seems to have dozens, whereas Ardu Plane has an awful lot less. And there are some other modes for things like quad plane that I'm not going to cover as part of this as well. Quad plane is a whole other subject for setting and building up things like VTOLs on top of RD plane. So with the introduction out of the way, let, let's get through these flight modes. I'm going to go at quite a pace. I'm going to give you kind of a very quick introduction to each of them in turn, talk about the ones that you need GPSs for, and then really talk about the ones that I actually use here. All different pilots have different needs, but these are all the ones that are currently available for Ardu Copter. Again, these change all the time, so use the documentation as the Bible for this stuff, because things are being tweaked and improved by the developers on a daily basis. So what we'll do is we'll go through each of these vertical lots. Um, so I've pulled out what I would call the primary flight modes, the ones that the vast majority of pilots are going to use with Ardu Copter on the left-hand side. And we have all the other stuff, which is some of the more exotic things that you might use once in a blue moon, or if you're using a very specific flight mode uh, or flight, type then you might bump into them so let's start with the left hand side so acro mode is exactly the same as acro mode on other flight control software it holds the attitude so there isn't any self level it's kind of for fl flying aggressively and that flippy floppy stuff one called stabilize which is like angle mode i guess it has a self level in the roll and pitch axis so it's one that I would recommend you start off in for most of the flights. I tend to fly a lot in stabilize. Circle, circles around a point in front of the model, and loiter holds the altitude and position using GPS for movement. So basically, loiter is like parking the copter in 3D space, just sits in the sky. Return to launch, guess what? Returns to launch location can also include landing. It kind of does by default typically. And then you have auto, which is where it will fly a mission that's in memory automatically. So you can draw a mission planner, particular mission, put it into the flight controller, and then putting it into auto, it will execute that mission and fly it autonomously. Those are the vast majority of what pilots are going to use. But let's go through all the others very quickly. 
So first one is air mode. Air mode works the same here as it does in things like beta flight and INAV. It keeps the PID loop working even when the throttle's at a low position. So if you're flying in acro, you're going to want air mode enabled as well to make sure that all the flips and rolls and everything, you can get out of them quite easy because the motors are always turning. Auto rotate is a special one. It's really used for helicopter models only and it allows you to land when there is a problem with the motor using the stored energy in the rotors. Auto tune, that is something that you're going to use at least once, probably in the maiden flight, just to get the PID values for the pitch and roll spot on. Makes tuning super easy for Arducopter. I wish things like Beta Flight had this ability. Brake brings the copter to an abrupt stop. Drift is like Stabilize that we looked at in the last slide, but combines yaw with roll. So it's more like a plane that when you uh, yaw about, it actually combines the two together. Um, it makes it feel more like a plane when you're flying it. Flip is makes it rise and flip. Flow hold uses the optical flow sensor to hold position in the air. So if you have one of those under the copter, it means it stays very still. Follow follows another vehicle. Guided will fly to a point that's sent to the model via a ground station. So in Mission Planner, when it's in guided mode, you can kind of click on the map and then that is sent to the model and the model will then fly autonomously to that position. Land, it will reduce the altitude to ground level. And then position hold is like loiter, but it has manual roll and pitch when the sticks are not centered. And sport is like altitude hold, but holds roll and pitch when the sticks are centered. Throw holds a position after a throwing takeoff, if that's what you want to do. Follow me means that the copter will follow you around. That does again need telemetry and a ground control station. So as you move the GPS position of the GCS, the ground control station, is sent to the copter and the copter then just moves those positions. you got simple and super simple. That's great for when you are learning to fly and you're not used to flying line of sight and getting the copter in different orientations because it keeps the copter's heading kind of relative to what it was when you took off. Smart return to launch is cool. The normal return to launch kind of flies back in a straight line. Smart return to launch will retrace the path back to home. So if you're flying in mountains or maybe you're using uh, other model types actually in RD Pilot where you need it to retrace a particular step um, or particular path, then that's a cool way to do it. Sys ID is something that's more for advanced users. I wouldn't worry about that. And then Turtle attempts to flip an inverted copter back upright. Turtle mode again is something that kind of came via the beta flight stuff. Last two, a zigzag, which is useful for things like spraying crops, because it does what it says in tin, flies in a zigzag. And then the last one is avoid underscore ADSB, and that's for avoiding manned aircraft that are transmitting ADSB information. So an awful lot of flight modes. However, the vast majority of pilots are only going to use the stuff on the left hand side with occasionally the odd bit of auto tune or something else unless there is a very very specific reason to use those other modes. If I just very quickly show you which ones need a GPS, all the ones that are highlighted in orange need a GPS. Most pilots, to be honest, who are going to be flying Arducopter are going to have a GPS and compass on there anyway. Uh, so I would not worry too much about this. But I, what I take away from this is that for Arducopter and Ardu Plane, really, making sure that you have a good GPS lock before you arm and fly is really crucial because an awful lot of the modes will use it. Next one to look at then is going to be Ardu Plane. Ardu Plane has an awful lot less in terms of modes. Some of them are going to have the same names as the stuff we've just looked at, like Acro and Stabilize, Loiter, Circle, that kind of stuff, Return to Launch, Auto, that's very similar on the left-hand side, but there's some new ones as well as some extra little modifying or sub-modes, I would tend to call them. So let's very briefly cover these. Some of these are going to feel very familiar after we've just done all the Arducopter stuff. First one is manual. That's regular RC control. There's no stabilization. There's no interference from the flight controller with the exception of applying the mixer so that, you know, the flying wing or VTL or whatever it is works. I fly a lot in manual and that is because a well set up plane flying in manual uh, if there isn't a lot of wind about, is a joy to fly and it's naturally stable. 
Fly-by-wire A and fly-by-wire B are modes that I know a lot of other pilots fly in a lot. Fly-by-wire A, the plane will hold the roll and pitch specified by the control sticks, and fly-by-wire B will do that, but will also hold the altitude as well. And then we have cruise on top of that, which is like fly-by-wire B, but also has heading lock. So the direction that it's flying in, it will maintain that as well, even if it's getting blown about by the wind. So most pilots will fly in either fly-by-wire A, B, or cruise if they're flying around. Uh, people like me, <laughs> a bit weird, I quite like manual as well. Last two on here, return to launch. Works exactly the same, kind of, as the copter. The copter version will automatically land and disarm itself. You have to kind of set up landing uh, as a separate thing in RD plane. And the last one then is auto, which is exactly the same as the auto in RD copter. It's going to automatically fly a preloaded mission that it has. We have lots of other primary flight modes that lots of the pilots fly with. The first one is then stabilize. That's RC control with simple stabilization. Uh, that's quite a nice one to fly in. And we also have acro, which provides rate-based stabilization with attitude lock. Um, I don't tend to use that a lot because a well-set-up, well-trimmed plane in manual, I find kind of works really well unless it's quite windy, in which case then I'll probably use stabilize. Loiter will circle around the point where you started the loiter, so when you flick into that mode, that GPS location becomes the centre of the circle that will fly around, because of course this is a plane, we can't hover in the air like an Ardu copter can. And then we also have circle, which is similar to loiter, but doesn't attempt to hold the position, it'll just fly in a circle, and if the wind's blowing it off in one particular direction, it'll just be taken away with the wind. So I tend to use loiter more than circle, because if it is a bit gusty, it'll try and maintain that position. Guided is used to fly the plane to a location without a mission, and thermal is very smart in RD plane. It's used for autonomous soaring. It's super cool, and there is like a, a soaring mode in INAV, but that is very, very basic compared to this. This is really clever. This will actually hunt for and fly in thermals to gain altitude. Uh, it'll automatically detect when it's gaining lift and do lots of other really cool things too. There are some extra little modes that you will use now and again. Uh, the only one out of this that I would tend to use would be uh, auto tune really which is the automatic tuning again of pitch and roll control gains just like in Ardocopter. And then we have takeoff and land guess what? And then we also have training, which is a special mode that's used for teaching students manual control. So if we have a look at the ones that I tend to use on a regular basis, let's have a look at our do plane. I only really fly in all of these in four of these modes, typically manual, fly by wire A, cruise, an auto. An auto is only there if I'm going to be flying a mission. Realistically, I'm probably only going to set up three modes in RD plane, manual, fly by wire A, and cruise for the vast majority of stuff, and set up return to launch maybe on an OD switch to bring it back to me if something goes wrong. But if we bring up the next one, which is RD copter, I'm using even less. I'll fly in stabilized mode, I'll fly in loiter because that will park it in 3D space. Again, I'll use auto for flying a predefined mission and then have return to launch probably set up as well to fly it back. All of those other things, with the exception of auto tune, maybe once on a maiden flight, aren't going to be used. So there we have it. Those are the flight modes, whistle stop tour for RD plane and RD copter. Remember that these things are changing all the time. The documentation is by far the best place to go and have a look at this. But hopefully now after covering those, feels a little bit less daunting. There are, is a lot of stuff, but realistically, I'm only, as I said, usually setting about four flight modes, and one of those is return to home anyway, so I don't tend to get into the weeds as much with these things. However, the power of Ardu Pilot is that all that stuff is available if you really want to. So Steve, hopefully that answers some of this and gives you a little bit more comfort, and then you can continue with your journey of learning all about Ardu Pilot flight modes in that fantastic documentation. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.